the, the more this goes on, the more certain I am that this is indeed a, a watershed. The Russian invasion of Ukraine represents a major shift in global politics, which will have ramifications for many years to come. This was an argument that we at the Center for Risk Analysis made in our weekly risk alert, which goes out to clients of the CRA every Monday morning at 7 a.m. The co-author of our risk alert is John Endres. He joins us today. So, John, what is your view of the current status of the conflict in Ukraine, and how does this play out from here? Well, I think that... Uh... Russia is really playing a very high stakes game here. Um, I think there's a certain expectation that was associated with the invasion of Ukraine. And that expectation was probably firstly, that military action would be um, successful. Secondly, that it would be rapid. And thirdly, that the effects of it were going to be contained. In other words, that other parts of the world and NATO especially, were not going to be drawn into military action or uh, help, the, help Ukraine mount a very credible opposition against Russia. And so I think that is really the, the, the concept that stood behind the invasion. Uh, at the moment, the war is about four or five days old, so it is still very, very fresh. And at this stage, it's really quite hard to say which way things are going. Um, it seems at this stage as if the idea that, uh, that the war should be very rapid or very contained is not quite panning out. Uh, but still, it is early days, so it might still be that, that Russia will get the upper hand and quite decisively end the conflict in its favor. All right. And up until very recently, there was sort of an aura of invincibility around Putin that his popularity seemed to endure despite various uh, domestic and international crises. He was seen as a master strategist. But do you think perhaps that he may have miscalculated in invading Ukraine? Again, uh, it's really hard to say which, which way things are going to turn out, uh, but I think there's at least a plausible scenario at the moment where you could consider a situation where um, the Russian army gets bogged down in Ukraine, um, is unable to declare a rapid victory, uh, maybe also finds that support within the Russian population, never strong to begin with, begins to weaken even further. If you consider that uh, photos of civilian casualties will start doing the rounds in the world, in Russia as well. Uh, possibly there will be some atrocities being committed, which is usually the prerogative of the invading force uh, or the occupying force. It would harm Russia's image quite considerably and also reduce its standing and esteem in the world. And under those circumstances, it is quite conceivable that the Russian elite and President Putin would come under pressure in terms of their um, the, the justification for the war and the ability to maintain motivation in favor of fighting it and also enduring the consequences that are being uh, foisted upon Russia at the moment by the international community. Yes, and I suppose critics of that argument might say, well, he's an authoritarian leader. He doesn't really care about domestic support. Uh, he doesn't have the same accountability mechanisms. But strongman leaders need to be able to have the perception of strength and any backward steps can be very harmful to their reputation and their status. Uh, so I think that perhaps he might be more fragile than he appears. But now, John, let, let's turn the conversation to how this impacts us domestically in South Africa, because it may seem that we are very far away from the events in Eastern Europe. But in fact, we are going to be potentially directly affected by what is happening there. What were some of the arguments that you put forward in the risk alert this week, John? Well, I think one of the big lessons from this conflict is how interconnected the world is uh, and how events in one part of the world really can have a big impact all around the world. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that as this conflict progresses and, and, and carries on. In terms of here in South Africa, there were three areas that we thought uh, local investors, market participants, and ordinary South Africans should play, uh, pay close attention to. And that was firstly energy prices. Um, so we know that Russia is a very important producer of oil and also natural gas, a really important player. So if those supplies get disrupted, we should expect oil prices to, to go up. And that has started happening already. Uh, and of course, here in South Africa, we are facing already a petrol price increase, I think of around 46 on Wednesday, um, not necessarily directly related to this. But if the tension and volatility continues, then we should expect further increases in South Africa, and fuel will get very expensive. Uh, 
The second thing is supply chain disruptions. Um, so we must expect that there will be at least some products uh, whose supply is going to be curtailed that come from Ukraine and also from Russia. Um, there are certain uh, minerals, for example, like nickel and aluminium, where I see the prices have risen very steeply, uh, as well as the fact that, of course, that military action does disrupt transport. Uh, for example, Antonov is a maker of very large aeroplanes based in Ukraine. Uh, the two largest models of aeroplane in the world, which is the Antonov uh, 225 and 124, uh, are unique in the world. And they are used to transport very large components and equipment like turbines and fire engine and helicopters around the world. So now if those planes can't be maintained properly uh, or backup supplies can't be gotten from Ukraine, then that transport cap capability falls away and it will also have an impact on supply chains. And the third uh, risk we flagged for our clients was that of food price inflation specifically. Because Russia and Ukraine are the world's among the largest exporters of wheat in the world, uh, a, a reduction in supply from them to world markets is going to lead to an increase in wheat prices. And if you connect that also to the very high fertilizer prices at the moment, there is now a plausible scenario where food prices generally start rising rapidly, which is going to hit poor people the hardest. Uh, and as we've seen on previous occasions in history, when food prices rise very fast and people can't afford food anymore, of course, it creates quite a lot of conflict, uh, unrest, political instability, food riots. Uh, and given what we experienced in South Africa in July last year, I think that is a risk we must be very much aware of. Right, John. So that, I think, is important to consider in terms of hard and soft commodities. But what about other areas of financial markets? Uh, you mentioned currencies. Uh, but could we be seeing the beginnings of a financial crisis emerging in the wake of this hard conflict? And what effect would that have on the globe? So we, we've seen some very uh, hawkish talk uh, from the Europeans and also the Americans, probably far more aggressive than uh, most commentators expected, and probably also more aggressive than Russia itself expected. Um, but there has now been talk and there, there will be measures to curtail Russia's access to the SWIFT payment system, which is a system that sends messages between banks in the world to confirm international transactions. And secondly, also to freeze Russia's foreign currency reserves, about two thirds of which are held outside the country, outside of Russia. And with restricting access to these reserves and to the SWIFT payment system, it means that it becomes very difficult for Russia to continue to participate in the world economy, for example, by importing goods or exporting goods. Uh, and as Russia does depend on imports to some extent, and of course on its export revenues, this is going to have a very significant effect. We've started seeing this, uh, the effects of this already with the ruble losing, uh, I think 25% in value overnight, uh, the Russian stock exchange being closed for trading. Uh, and certainly uh, there is going to be very disruptive, a very disruptive effect on the Russian economy. And if we speculate further, it is plausible that there are going to be consequences for other countries as well for the rest of the world, because you know this is a, a very big intervention into the world financial system, the way it operates at the moment. Uh, you rely on it to work smoothly, like a, a well-oiled machine. And I think taking out a component of the world financial system like that really can can uh, block up the gears and uh, uh, cause possibly even global repercussions on global markets and maybe even a pullback on the uh, uh, global asset price bubble. And John, would you consider this a watershed moment in terms of geopolitics? Because we have seen flare-ups in this region before, uh, Georgia, Crimea, but uh, nothing to this, uh, to, to this extent uh, in essentially the post-Cold War era. Uh, where do you think this is heading in terms of the broader trajectory of global politics? The, the more this goes on, the more certain I am that this is indeed a watershed. Um, if you look at what's been happening in German politics, for example, which traditionally has been very pacifist since the Second World War, for good reason, uh, the Germans have now decided to uh, spend 100 billion euros on increasing their military readiness at short notice. Um, they have cancelled the Nord Stream 2 project that was meant to supply gas from Russia into Germany. Uh, and they are talking about uh, a reality shock now, for, for many years, the Germans felt quite safe in their welfare state uh, under the protection of the mighty United States. And now they see how dependent, firstly, they are on Russian gas and also how uh, you know, physical force still plays a role in today's world. 
you know, we, we thought that maybe we moved into a post-violence world where everything can be settled by negotiation or financial sanctions and, you know, uh, non-physical interventions. Uh, and I think Germans and probably other Europeans also are now beginning to wonder if this was not a, a terrible miscalculation. So yes, I, I do think that this is going to change the tra trajectory of the world's development over the next few years. John Andrews, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. Do you think that Vladimir Putin miscalculated by invading Ukraine, or is it still too early to tell? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, if you would like to gain access to our weekly risk alerts, you may consider becoming a client of the CRA. There is a link in the description below where you can find out more about our subscription service. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.